Now, continuation of previous video. As said, S is the source, liberating energy in all possible directions. We take a sphere of radius R, we draw a sphere of radius R, and these dots represent the particle of the medium lying on the surface of the sphere. Now, what happened? This source of light, this source of energy, liberate energy in all possible directions. Now, this energy will travel with same speed in all directions. Then what happened? All these particles will receive energy from S at the same time because the distance is same and the speed with which the energy is traveling in all possible directions is same. Now we all know medium particles vibrate. Now what happened? As soon as these particles receive energy, they start vibration. They go ahead. they return and go to back side as well. Now here what happened? They move in forward direction and then come back, then go in backward direction as well. It means these particles of the medium are vibrating in same phase. And check the, these mediums, these medium, these medium particles are lying on a surface then this surface is actually wave front. This surface is termed as wave front. Now what is wave front? If the particles of the medium are vibrating in same phase, then a surface drawn joining all the particles of the medium that are vibrating in same phase is termed as wavefront. So what is wavefront? It is the locus of all the particles of the medium that are vibrating in same phase. So here all the particles are vibrating in same phase so we call it as wavefront. I will be using this topic once again in chapter Huygens principle. So please do not forget this. So try to remember for point source we have spherical wave front, spherical shape. If you take a linear source, suppose we have a light source which is in the form of line or straight line, linear source. Now what happened? If I imagine this as light source, it will radiate energy in all possible direction. Now when I say all possible direction, it actually radiate energy in a cylinder. So for linear source, we'll have cylindrical wavefront. All the particles lying on the curved surface of the cylinder will have same phase of oscillation. All the particles of the medium lying on the surface of the cylinder, they are vibrating in same phase of oscillation. So this cylinder is actually a wavefront. So I hope the term wavefront is clear to everyone. Cylindrical wavefront for linear source, spherical wavefront for point source and if we imagine a very big cylindrical or very big spherical wavefront and a very small part of it. If you imagine a very small part of cylindrical or spherical wavefront, then that small part represent a plane wavefront. And remember for plane wavefront it is necessary that the rays are perpendicular to the wavefront. So if light rays are parallel to each other, then the wavefront will be a plane wavefront. So in general, there are three types of wavefronts, spherical, cylindrical and plane wavefront, point source, spherical wavefront, linear source, cylindrical wavefront and for parallel rays, parallel light rays, we have plane wavefront. Now I'll be using the concept of plane wavefront in the topic which we were discussing. Now coming back, now visibility is there. Now transverse nature of EM wave. Let us consider and consider a plane electromagnetic wave propagating along x-axis. The wavefront will be a plane. Check, word came. Wavefront will be a plane. One, plane one, parallel to yz plane, figure below, I will be drawing that. For any position of wavefront, Electric and magnetic field vector will be zero. To the right of wavefront, 
while to the left of it its value depends on it's not the values while to the left of it the values of vector e and vector b depends on x and t but not on y and z now why not on y and z and why it only depends on x and t let's have a look now to discuss the same i'll take x y and z axis this is x axis this one is y axis and this one is z axis suppose i have a wave which is propagating along x axis so it is given to us that the wave is propagating along x axis so i'll draw an arrow this arrow and this arrow represent a direction of propagation direction of propagation of wave is along x axis now here to prove the transverse nature of em wave we draw a cuboid or you can say a parallel pipe a b c d e f g h how just have a look suppose this is the left face this diagram is pretty simple you all can draw it very easily then i hope you're getting how i'm drawing it pretty simple there is no problem in it and then i'll complete the parallel pipe suppose this the name or the vertices are as a b c d a b c d and then e f g and h suppose their sides are dx dy dz we are imagining very small cuboid length is dx ab is dy this is dy and bc is dz because bc is parallel to z axis so dx dy dz now here suppose we imagine that electric field is along x axis initially i'll imagine that electric field is along x axis and wave is also propagating along x axis and in the end i'll prove that if electric field is along x axis then electromagnetic wave will not produce so this will be, we call it as a contradiction method initially we imagine wave along x axis and then we take electric field along x axis in that means in the direction of propagation and in the end will prove that if electric field is along x axis then wave will not propagate or there is no electromagnetic wave now whatever is written here just have a look wave is propagating along x axis and i'm drawing a plane wave front check this dotted rectangle this dotted rectangle represent a plane wave front so a plane wave front this dotted rectangle is plane wave front check to the right of this wave front electric and magnetic field will be zero because wave is still at the position wave is at the position e f g h and not ahead so to the right of it the values of e and v are zero while to the left of it the value of e and v depends upon x and t because we are imagining wave moving along x axis and not along y and z axis i'll continue in the next video